Hello everybody, this is Tabitha Hughes and this week I am coming to you from a PSLA conference in Hilton Head, South Carolina, which I'm from South Carolina and this is a literacy conference. So I'm actually at work, but I'm doing uh, some schoolwork for you guys. So um, this week we were asked to look at historical newspapers uh, for historical events and that would be the basis of our post. So this week I chose to talk about the journey of women um, to gain the right to vote. So a little background information, uh, we know that the first women's rights movement was held in Seneca Falls, New York, July 19th through 20th of 1848. And this was kind of the first organized effort by women to bring to the forefront the discussion of women's rights, but not just women's rights to vote, but um, women's rights to social, civil, and religious um, rights and equality in those forms. Um, of course, this was very controversial in the time period. This is pre-Civil War and um, society, government, politics, religion is pretty much a male arena. And so this was a very um, spoken about, you know, controversial topic. From there, um, the major women, the major players at the Seneca Falls Convention, people like uh, Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Lucretia Mott, went on to form the National Women's Suffrage Association, or the NWSA, in 1869. Um, but unfortunately, after the Civil War, there was some infighting, some disagreements about which direction the organization should take, and so there was a split. And then you had one organization um, known as the NWSA, they continued that name, led by Susan B. Anthony and um, Elizabeth, uh, yeah, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and their platform was basically they were wanting to um, influence the federal government to pass an amendment for the right for women to vote, for universal women's suffrage. The other side of the debate, uh, that organization became known as the um, American Women's Suffrage Association, the AWSA, and it was led by Lucy Stone and others, and they were more concerned with affecting state legislatures and a universal right to vote because remember both women and Native Americans could not vote still in the in the 1920s and so they were advocating universal suffrage. Um, the reason this these two groups kind of squabbled and began to split was over the 14th and 15th uh, amendments. Of course one granting citizenship and the other granting the right to vote. However, um, after some time, both organizations realized that there's power in numbers, and so they rejoined and became, in 1890, the National American Women's Suffrage Association. So from there, they began to organize and so forth, and by 1916, had formed the National Women's Party. So this week's newspaper um, articles that I found kind of go hand in hand with those. The first one, of course, um, is from 1920. It's August 27th, 1920, and it is called um, Text of the Proclamation Signed by Colby Certifying Ratification of the 19th Amendment. And so this was uh, basically documenting the Secretary of State, um, Bainbridge Colby's uh, ratification signing into law uh, the 19th Amendment, which did give women the right to vote. So you can see from 1848 to 1920 is how long it took for women to get the right to vote. The next newspaper article that I found was called Trial, Trial to Women's Party, Gift Comes from Only Survivor of the 1848 Seneca Falls Convention. And um, this was just basically about a donation that was given by Miss um, Charlotte uh, Pope of Philadelphia. And this was to celebrate the National Women's Party getting a new headquarters. And so, uh, the trial was sent, engraved, and it was going to be to kind of turn the soil at the new organization. 
The final article I found was Women Plans Meeting in a Historic Building, but Owner of Site in Seneca Falls Refuses Permission. And so this was just, this article talked about how the women's group wanted to come back and wanted to have um, their meeting here at the original Wesleyan Chapel where the, where the first Seneca Falls Convention um, occurred, but that property had since been many different things. It was no longer a chapel. It was converted to a theater, then a moving picture theater in 1920. And then finally the owner, um, one Mr. A.B. Hillkirk, had turned it into a garage. And he, so was, he was refusing to grant permission. So I hope you enjoyed this little background on women's suffrage and gaining the right to vote. Thanks. Bye-bye.